House of Representatives urges federal government to designate bandits as terrorists. Budget defense. Ministry of Works unveils plans to rehabilitate 800 network of roads across the country. And Speaker Femi Bajabiamila wants public perception of the legislature to change for the better. Hello and welcome to you and your reps. I am Victor Azo. Thank you for joining us. The House of Representatives Committee on Army has urged the federal government to, in line with the resolution passed by the National Assembly, designate bandits as terrorists. The committee is optimistic that by so doing, the menace can be decisively dealt with by the authorities. The consistent trust of bandits to peace and security in areas they operate is of concern to Nigerians. The committee used this budget's defense meeting to tax Chadok to provide the kind of training that enables effective response to challenges of insecurity. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, to designate bandits as terrorists so that the security forces can have more power to deal with the situation. Train and Doctor Command Nigeria Army is committed to, to train very mobile, dynamic, fierce, gallant and ever-ready Nigerian Jews into the Nigerian Army who wish, who wish to defend uh, the territorial integrity of their fatherland. As the budget performance appraisal session with the Minister of Power, he told the House Committee on Power that the Zingiru hydropower project will be completed in December 2021. The committee asked what the ministry is doing about the absence of electricity supply in Meduguri, Bruno State, for close to a year. They were unable to continue to work at the time they wanted to work because of security reasons. Solar home system, we would like, it's a very laudable project of the president. I've seen it work, so we have to really make it work. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Pilgrims Affairs has urged the Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board to ensure reimbursement of deposits to intending pilgrims who could not perform the pilgrimage due to COVID-19 pandemic. We have a backlog of pilgrims from, 19, from 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, inshallah. That is if, how do you intend to persuade um, the Saudi authorities to maybe increase allocation? The new minister of health in Saudi Arabia was their former minister of health. And uh, that is sending some signal. And uh, so we want to be careful. The commission is proposing 1.4 billion naira for capital projects in 2022. And as ministries, departments and agencies continue to make a case for their spending plans, the Ministry of Works and Housing, which has a proposed budget of more than 450 billion naira for 2022, says it is to enable it to achieve reasonable progress on the reconstruction and rehabilitation of more than 800 network of roads across the country. Aside providing information on the level of work on all ongoing road projects and amounts released, the minister brought to the attention of the House Committee on Works the activities of some road transporters whose sharp practices are damaging Nigerian roads. It is something that we are going to need your support. We are going to need the support of every level of government to quickly bring it under control. There is perhaps no state that is spared here. Some people are doing business at the expense of everybody. So what they should carry, 60, 70 tons in three trucks, they are cheating by loading onto one truck and they are destroying our common assets. The committee commended the various initiatives of the federal government meant to improve on funding. The plan by the government to introduce tolling in some selected roads is a welcome development and we are fully in support of it. The main thing is for us to have road in RAN. RAN is the headquarters of Kalabaligi local government. In another development, the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs said the ministry has adopted a well-coordinated approach to fast-track the completion of projects captured in the budget for economic benefits of people in the region. We are hoping to raise funds for the same East-West Road. Uh, so it's not 
we can't sit back because it, uh, government is government. No matter which section the money comes from, what the people want to see is a project. The sum of 25.56 billion was located for the capital projects of the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs to support the development of the region by facilitating the completion of critical ongoing projects. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Youth Development during the budget defense engagements with the National Youth Service Corps expressed satisfaction with the revenue generation drive of the agency. NYC we are putting on taking caps so that I don't want those to be an agency that will always go cap and beg, begging for funds and so that at least we should do something to bring revenue with you. We generated over 280 million naira, which we paid to the Federation account. The NYC is doing very well because we went to the kitchen, we saw what to provide debt for them, and then we saw the quality, the environment, and so on and so forth. So I think they have been managing scarcity. Both sides stress commitments to work together to further improve the scheme in view of its benefit to youth development for national unity. And now the Speaker, House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, says there is a need to change public perception of the legislature as it is strategic to the survival of Nigeria's democracy. This was at the commencement of a two-day workshop for the House of Representatives Committee on Media and Public Affairs in Abuja. National Assembly correspondent Lamia Ali reports. The 40-member House Committee on Media and Public Affairs serves as an intermediary between the House and the public. It shapes perspectives in relation to constitutional rule and other activities of the House. Femi Gbajabiamila says a lack of knowledge in the public space on the institution has led to misunderstandings. He urged the committee to change the narrative, which is why this capacity building workshop was organized. When a small committee or an institution as the National Assembly is misunderstood or misjoined, it has the possibility of the potential of snowballing or having even a, a, a larger and more dangerous effect on our democracy. Our organization has also a very long tradition in Nigeria to provide capacity building seminars to the media, especially to the press, believing that press freedom and the freedom of expression is one of the most important values of any democracy. Chairman of the committee, Benjamin Kalu, says engagements with traditional and new media enables the committee to adequately address issues of interest to promote the image of the House, curb press speculations on House activities, and effectively manage House publicity. I used to be considered in this capacity building workshop include strategies for engaging the media in legislative work beyond plenary to cover important aspects of committee work, which is where the bulk of time and resources of the Assembly are invested. Latest communication and public relations strategy are the main features as the workshop. Often times during debates on the floor of the chamber, members try to get the attention of the presiding officer by announcing point of information or point of order. In what scenarios do these legislative phrases apply and what do they signify? What is the difference between the two, by the way? Let's join Chairman of the House Committee on Rules and Business, Abubakar Fulata, to do the honors. The House operates on the basis of uh, uh, codified standing rules. Uh, before you are allowed to speak, uh, in a sitting, in a plenary, and uh, unless you are called open by the presiding officer to talk on a subject matter, if you are now talking without being called open by the presiding officer, you, may, you must cite a particular section of the standing rules of the house to present, to make your own presentation. Now, when you stand up, you quote the specific order, order 10, rule 5, order 8, rule 4. You must 
specifically because you are not called open. You are not. You are now interjecting. Our rules allow you to, at any point, raise a point of order. So, under such circumstance, you cite the particular uh, uh, order uh, or rule uh, that you are uh, ref referring to. It is only by citing that, that now the presiding officer will allow you to continue. If you are not able to cite any particular section of the standing rules, the presiding officer can rule you out of order and ask you to sit down immediately. But a, a point of information is to just to guide. There, you, you are not citing a particular, any specific uh, standing rules. You are only guiding. That you are this thing. They are giving information to guide the house. Okay, you are just uh, impromptu. Uh, uh, there is a confusion on a certain subject matter, and then uh, you can stand up and say, that, "Okay, point of information." You just to guide that such such that, that that you are privy to a particular information that would benefit the house, and then based on that information, the direction of the debate can can change. Mr. Speaker now can 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 decide that uh, okay, uh, such based on the information you are providing. Uh, uh, that issue uh, can be jettisoned, or some some other direction can be can be can be taken. A recent attempt to invade the home of a Supreme Court justice has been roundly criticised, but there is a bill in the works to ensure that such events never occur again. The bill is sponsored by the member representing Afibo North and South Federal Constituency of Eboyin State, Igariwe Iduma Ingo, who is also Deputy Chairman of the House Committee on Appropriations. It's to amend Section 308 of the Constitution, which talks about uh, immunity. And I'm thinking and I'm uh, proposing in that bill that if the executive is enjoying immunity so that it protects them, so that they do their jobs without fear of prosecution while on the job. Uh, I don't see why it shouldn't also be extended to those at the commanding heights of um, our judiciary. Uh, I'm talking of people like the Supreme Court judges. The other day you heard about invasion of a Supreme Court judge's house. Uh, the other day uh, in the past we also noted uh, Justice Nguta of blessed memory. His house was Dingba was and some other uh, Supreme Court judges. Uh, while there are Supreme Court judges, such things shouldn't happen. Just like you don't invade a governor's residence, just as you don't invade Mr. President's residence while on official duty, you shouldn't also invade Mr. Speaker's house while he's Speaker. You shouldn't also invade the uh, 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 Senate President's residence while he, he is occupying, while they are occupying these official offices. So in this particular bill, I spoke particularly about the judiciary that they should enjoy immunity. Because I wasn't just talking of the Supreme Court judges, I was also talking of the heads of all the courts. They should enjoy immunity. If at the end of their tenure as judges, they committed crimes while on duty, just like a governor could face EFCC after office, or a president could also face prosecution, let them also face prosecution, but not while in office. As budget defense continues at the National Assembly, Nigerians also continue to bear their minds on what they would like to see when implementation of the 2022 appropriation begins. Let's hear them. They should concentrate more on agriculture. We have too many fallow lands in Nigeria. So if you concentrate on that, it from there our economy can be improved. The world is looking outside all this oil that we are talking about. So let agriculture be the mainstay of our economy. Youth will be empowered, they will be employed. And the issue of unemployment will be drastically reduced and our economy will be better for it. If our Nigerian government can focus on employing youths, I think it will be better. At least it will reduce bandits, it will reduce kidnappers and all of that. Human capital is the most important uh, segment of the society. So if uh, one can get uh, a qualitative citizenry, 
That is, uh, if your people are well informed, well educated, when enlightened, all things will fall in the right place. Uh, I think one of the reasons why we are not uh, developing the way it ought to be is because we are not uh, concentrating on our own uh, people because there is no amount of uh, natural resources, there is no amount of uh, any resources that will make a country to develop without having uh, their own, uh, without empowering their, their people. So I think the most important sector of this thing is uh, education and then followed maybe by health. There is very serious problem of uh, food shortage. And uh, apart from that, we have a lot of economic gains to make if we go into agriculture. And she invests funds and you know other measures on the security aspects of the country and education too. Uh, but mostly the security, that's our major challenge in the country. The government should invest more in agriculture and make sure farmers are doing well. The prices of food won't go up, people will be happy. To have quite a lot of our youths that are unemployed and employment is one of the key indices to measure the economy of a country. So I would have loved that the Nigerian government should focus on providing jobs. This week on You and Your Reps, we turn attention to the House Committee on Commerce. We engaged Chairman of the Committee, Femi Fakeye, on the ease of doing business in the country and balance of trade, among other issues. Our committee is saddled with oversight responsibility on several MDAs, all of which put together have the mandate to fulfill the most important issue right now for this government, which is the ease of doing business. So that whether you are talking about um, the Corporate Affairs Commission or the Ministry of itself, Ministry of uh, Industry, Trade and Investment, everything that they do, the totality of what they do is to promote commerce and business and make sure that people, either Nigerians or those who come from abroad, to pursue foreign direct investment, that they all find it easy to navigate the terrain of business in Nigeria. The summary of our experience so far over the past two years has been that the ease of doing business is getting better and better in the, in the country. If you try to incorporate a company uh, five years ago or before that, everything was manual was manually, manually, manually done. You had to go there, paperwork, paperwork. But now, it's virtually almost all online. You don't need a lawyer as such any longer to do any registration or filing. If you are computer literate enough, you could basically get this done by yourself, and they are faster. I'm aware that turnaround period for registering a company is a matter of days now. And I can tell you, I, sitting here, in the past, I had made an effort to register a company and it took me weeks, in some cases months, not any longer. Now it's a matter of days and we are still pushing them to do it faster. There's no reason why you can't do it like it's done abroad in most places, where you go, spend a few minutes and you walk out with a certificate of incorporation in your hand. You can go to anywhere, they have an office to incorporate, they ask, questions, you answer them, and while you stand there, they say, son, this is a certificate of incorporation. 
that's the, the target we are hoping to achieve in Nigeria. I don't know the figures, but we are negative because, you know, this is a, a, a consuming country, if you will. Everything about you, about me and you, in your kitchen, in your office, is imported. That is a big subject matter to me because I think it's um, an issue that if we don't address quickly, hmm, it's something that is a very glaring where we will be ending. If you don't produce what you eat, and you don't eat what you produce, then uh, something is missing. Take food, for instance. The only item that we have tried, and only just tried, to boost the production of is rice. Okay? Uh, everything else is still being imported. And it's a long journey. It's a long, it's not a, it's not, it's not, it's not a dive to just say, okay, oh, you know what? In two or three years, we will be having 80% things that we use Produced in Nigeria is impossible because it takes time. But I think the country is still bogged down rather than move on into industrialization. No country today, no country today that we know is a country, you know, can claim to have a high enough standard of living for its citizens unless they are industrialized. We are far from this thing, really, in Nigeria because just about everything we do or eat. It's important and it's a major issue, but it won't be a thing that will, that will go away unless we have conscious planning that is sustained from one regime to another. Unfortunately, we don't have that in Nigeria as such. One four-year cycle, the president, if he's lucky, is returned for another four years and that's it. And what he has done may not be sustained by the successor. Those are the issues. And right now, look at right now. Rather than worry about how do we get these youth employed? How do we move people from unemployment to mass employment? We are still concerned now, worrying any more time on who, who is going to be the next president. Zoning, where is it going to come from? Those are the issues. We are bogged down into all those mundane, fundamental, foundational issues for the country. It is a matter of political engineering getting the country's leadership to focus on what is needful, what is paramount. What have we done to ensure that these young people who are very energetic mentally and physically they can be absorbed into productive efforts that will add value to the economy? Not a whole lot. Uh, the other day we were talking on the floor while debating this budget, and I got up and I said, look, loans bother me because the figures are getting higher and higher, but there's something that bothers me more. And that is the fact that the revenue of government is shrinking because we are only focusing in terms of those who pay tax, who support government, we are only focusing on the ones that are easy to track. The ones that are getting salaries, the employers become tax collection agent for those. Uh, the ones that buy shares, oh, stock exchange or the stock brokers, they are the collection agents for those. Oh, somebody bought a house, I mean, sold a house, Oh, you must make a profit. Okay, so you can track all those, but what about the masses of people? And a certain segment of the press tried to demonize what I said. So, oh, see the man that says the people in the foreign, I mean, the uh, informal sector, who we know are poor. See the man who says they should be paying tax. That's because government somewhere has dropped the ball. There ought to be a tax code that says everybody here must pay contribution, I mean, must contribute something to the till based upon ability. So it is not you that will determine whether you are able to pay or not. Government will determine whether you are able to pay or not. And if you are able to pay, then you pay something to encourage this government to keep going. Otherwise, I don't know how we're going to get out of the woods. Indeed, balance of trade is important to the economy of any nation. And that explains federal government's stance that we eat what we grow and vice versa. And that's you and your reps for the week. We thank you very much for watching. I am Victor Azu. See you next time.